Uh, you'll hear. Hello, uh, we're here with uh, Commissioner Bestephanie Bowman, who's running for re-election for Port Commission position three. Would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? Excellent, thank you so much 36 Dems for having me tonight, Stephanie Bellman, when you're currently serving Port of Seattle commissioners. Before I get started, I just wanted to give you 30 seconds about my personal background. Um, during the day, my full-time job, I serve as the executive director of the Washington State Asset Building Coalition. We're a statewide nonprofit that works with low income individuals and communities to help them build financial assets to move, uh, alleviate poverty and move into the middle class. Things like home ownership, small business development, developing savings, emergency savings, retirement savings, college savings, and basically uh, helping people get an economic foundation underneath them. The reason I've been serving in this position for 10 years. The reason I bring that up is that it actually relates very much to the Port of Seattle, because I believe that the Port of Seattle's mission is to use the public assets of the port to help build up communities. And um, we've done that in a lot of different ways. I wanted to highlight a couple right now. Um, I'm really proud to have the uh, endorsement of the Seattle King County Building Trades Union. And that was because we saved thousands of jobs last year in 2020 by keeping our construction jobs going, working in partnership with labor to make sure those jobs were safe, but keeping people employed during the pandemic. I'm really proud also to have the endorsement of the Northwest Women's Political Caucus and API leader, Governor Gary Locke, for my work working with small women and minority-owned businesses at the airport, which we kept all of them open during COVID. Not a single business in our airport dining and retail uh, program closed during the pandemic. In, ad in addition to that, I was really proud of my work on having the first uh, COVID vaccination clinic at the airport to help our over 6,000 airport workers get vaccinated. We've done a lot, but we have a lot more to do and I'm eager to talk about those things tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Great, thank you. And so now we'll move into our prepared questions and uh, the responses to these are two minutes in length and we have uh, Summer, Barbara, Sherry, then Alice asking those questions. So Summer, would you like to go ahead? Of course. COVID has increased ex existing inequities. As port commissioner, how would you support the most vulnerable? How would you promote an equitable recovery and create opportunity for all throughout the port? Awesome question, because this is exactly what we've been working on for the last year. Um, it has been inequitable. Um, in terms of the pandemic, a couple of things that we've done specifically, um, we recognize that the folks hit hardest by the pandemic, most of them live in South King County. We created the South King County Fund, which has provided over uh, total, we'll have $10 million in grants for those communities to help them both get jobs and rebuild their communities from the pandemic and offering new opportunities for women and minority owned businesses out there. In addition to that, um, you know, I'd say that my personal goal is putting together 5,000 new green jobs related to the port. Those need to be equitable, they need to be inclusive, and they need to be sustainable. We've got a lot of different ways to do that, but there are hundreds of opportunities for folks getting into uh, port industries and thinking about how they can build careers, whether it is in energy efficiency, habitat restoration, carbon reduction or carbon sequestration. 5,000 new jobs is an ambitious goal, but is absolutely doable. By having these jobs happen around the airport, around the seaport, hitting those that have been um, hurt most by the pandemic, I think is one of the best ways to help everybody rise up. In addition, I think the port has a great opportunity, as I started to say earlier, to play more of a role in public health. We uh, operated the first vaccination clinic at SeaTac Airport, very much a first in the port's 100 year history, but we haven't stopped there. We actually have done vaccinations at Fisherman's Terminal for our fishermen that are going out to sea on May 15th. Um, obviously very important to those in the 36th district as you are all in our port backyard. Sorry, 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, with that, there's, um, there's many more things we're doing, but in the, I'd say the biggest thing that we can do is um, help people get back to work and make sure that they have living wages and benefits underneath them so that they can rise up. Great, thank you. I'm gonna put question two, Barbara. How have you worked to combat climate change and promote climate justice? How would you ensure that the port drastically lowers the net carbon emissions by 2030 and achieves carbon neutrality by 2050? Fantastic question. I'm so glad we're completely aligned on these goals. Um, let's recognize the two biggest uh, areas of air emissions 
Um, it's both at the airport from airlines and at the seaport from ocean going vessels. Two things that we're doing that I have been a strong supporter of and worked uh, tirelessly on at the airport. Getting sustainable aviation fuels to the airport requires lots of different things, but the first thing it requires is a low carbon fuel standard, which was just passed by the legislature and has been the port's number one legislative priority for the last three years. With that incentive in place, we are a big step forward in bringing sustainable aviation fuels to the airport, which will dramatically reduce the emissions at the airport. But there's still more to do. We have uh, just signed a contract for bringing renewable natural gas to heat the central terminal. It'll heat 55% of the airport with renewable natural gas, which is carbon neutral. In addition to that, at the airport, we have also have new plug-in uh, basically plug in utilities for the planes. If you've been on a plane recently, you might've noticed that there's, uh, they shut their engines off when they're loading and unloading passengers, both helping reduce air emissions, but also most importantly, helping those workers who work underneath the airplanes um, to breathe cleaner air. At the seaport, we're doing equally great things. Shore and power at Terminal 5, uh, which is the plug-in technology for the ocean-going vessels, which allows them to shut off their stacks when they're at berth, again, reducing air emissions. Moving to electric cargo handling equipment is a top priority of mine, and we've been working on this for a couple of years. But probably the thing I'm most passionate about at the marine terminals is working towards zero emission drayage trucks, because that really affects our uh, driving community, the vast majority of which are immigrant and refugees um, who are on more limited incomes. Getting them these zero emission electric drayage trucks is a big game changer, both for the air and for economic justice for this community. Thank you. Uh, question three, Sherry. Hi, um, the port has operations and activities on tribal and, and indigenous land. How would you use your position to elevate indigenous people and encourage more equity and opportunity for BIPOC communities? Give us some specific examples of your plans in this aspect. How would you handle your approach to women and people of color owned businesses? Sorry, I don't have to say that. Sounds great. Um, that's a lot of packed into one question. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to start with the first part of the question and talk about um, those on indigenous lands. Um, one great example of my work on this is um, what's called the Youth Opportunity Initiative, which uh, I created and we passed on the Port Commission in the summer of 2020, providing more than 250 jobs for at-risk youth from underserved communities in King County, the vast majority of which were from um, South King County, but we also made sure that we reached out to our tribal partners and had jo jobs set aside specifically to bring in tribal youth into port related industries. It's one of the many ways that we can start to lift up those communities. We've done a lot working with the Duwamish on habitat restoration around Terminal 117. Obviously, these are the, the heartlands of the Duwamish people and the Duwamish Valley. And it is the Port of Seattle has the um, privilege of operating on these lands. And by doing restoration and creating green jobs is a great way to help lift up the tribal interest in that area. Working with women and uh, people of color, um, as we call people of color businesses, um, I've been the champion on that for more than six years. I created what's called the Diversity and Contracting Initiative five years ago at the Port of Seattle, which set a goal to triple the number of women and minority firms with which we do business at the port. To date, we've gone from, I believe, 154 firms to over 350 that we now do business with. It has a really specific interest in reaching out to community seeing what their needs are and bringing them into the port to provide opportunities that they wouldn't have in other um, areas. Last thing I'd add is I have uh, led the port's charge on trying to overturn initiative 200. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question number four, Alice. What is the port's responsibility when it comes to protecting and lifting up workers? What do you think are some opportunities for improving the port's relationship with organized labor and those workers who, don't, who do not currently have access to the protection of a union, such as Uber and Lyft drivers? Oh, great question. Thank you. There's so many ways. Well, let me start with a couple. So, um, for example, when uh, Proposition 1 was passed in the city of SeaTac, um, the port actually went above Proposition 1 and passed what's called the Quality Jobs Initiative, which increased the wages for airport dining and retail workers, the vast majority of which are workers at the airport, to the King County standard of living and also required our contractors at the port to provide um, uh, full-time benef medical benefits for full-time employees and 
and provide um, paid time off um, in addition to other benefits. Um, it's one of the ways that we leaned in um, to that initiative. But moving forward, there's other things that we've done as well. Most recently worked with Senator Kaiser and passed um, an initiative or a measure in Olympia to include the airline catering workers. They were left out by the folks that wrote Proposition 1, so they have not been eligible for the $15 minimum wage. The Port of Seattle and I personally testified on this bill in Olympia this year um, to raise that up and allow the port to be able to uh, regulate that industry. And I'm really proud that it just passed. I think it's one of the ways that we can work to make sure that all workers are getting a living wage if they're working at or near the the airport. Um, I certainly absolutely understand the, um, the position of Uber and Lyft and other rideshare drivers and support all of their efforts to try and unionize. Um, it's a big issue. Obviously, taxi drivers um, have been seeking that same thing. And we've um, come to a very good agreement working with the Teamsters. 30 seconds working with the Teamsters, who um, are now essentially the voice for our taxi drivers. But I believe that those rideshare drivers that access the airport should have those same rights. Great, thank you. And so now thank we'll you. move into uh, follow up questions. And again, the responses for these are one minute apiece. Um, okay. Have any follow up questions from the board? Uh, Barbara, then Alice. So I am fascinated by your the your day job, the, the job that you've been doing for 10 years, uh, statewide, creating um, assets for uh, vulnerable and under, um, you know, uh, under advantaged people. I'd like to ask you how that informs your work on the port, and are there things that you um, bring from that you would like to bring from there to the port? Are there ideas uh, and um, strategies that the port could benefit from? Yes, um, I'm gonna try and keep this brief because I know I only have a minute, but it has informed my work at the port. And one great example of that is my work to place a the port's first ever tiny house village uh, in Inner Bay in the 36th district. Um, that was the effort that I led a number of years ago because I work with disadvantaged communities and understand the crisis that we're having in sh uh, sheltering folks in our region. So that was um, that definitely comes from my work. In terms of bringing it into the port, so many things that we can do. I've worked with Port Jobs, which is a 501c3 separate from the Port of Seattle, but it's housed at the airport to do things like financial empowerment, financial education, bringing in banking services. Uh, these are ways that um, work that I do in my day job that we can help bring in those services to airport workers. Um, 15 last, seconds. Last but not least, uh, things like the COVID vaccination clinic, again, informs how I look at the port. Go to where people are, provide them services at their workplace don't expect them to try and come to where you are thank you and i'm happy to talk about it later barbara if you want to i'll send you my email so <laughs> great yeah love it yeah ellis um yeah i'm wondering what do you think the port's role is in um, helping create and foster um walkable bikeable livable communities okay. i think a lot of times we see um, you know, freight and the port as being, you know, antagonistic to those um, more like, you know, to safety for folks who aren't in a vehicle. And I'm just sort of curious what your take is on that. Oh, that's a great question. So um, I totally understand it. So I am the world's biggest supporter of light rail and anything related to transit. So um, in fact, I, if you've ever taken light rail to the airport and you've seen the golf carts that go between the light rail station and the terminal, that was my initiative when I started on the port commission. The reason that I did that was because I wanted to encourage more people to use transit to get to the airport. And I know that that three quarter of a mile walk between the terminal and the sound transit station was actually prohibitive for people with um, mobility issues or, or those with children, for example. So any way we can encourage transit um, to port facilities is essential. I would say the conflict with freight is a big one, especially when you're looking around Terminal 25 and Terminal 30. So the port has actually invested in the safe and swift corridor. Might not, have might not have heard of that, but that's actually our effort to work with the biking community to help have bike paths that are separate from freight because we don't want those collisions. And unfortunately they happen too often. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Any other follow-up questions? Sherry, go ahead. Hey, um, 
When we interviewed um, the, uh, your opponent, um, she mentioned that you voted against um, the $15 minimum wage um, initiative. Uh, not really sure which thing you voted no on, but anyways, I just wanted you to address that. Absolutely. Um, myself, along with uh, Commissioner Courtney Gregoire, voted for the port to join the lawsuit against Proposition 1 to determine the jurisdiction of Proposition 1. <coughs> Proposition 1 uh, appeared that the city of SeaTac would have jurisdiction over the port, and we vehemently disagreed with that. The Port of Seattle's assets are regional assets. It is not subject to one city or another. I think that we can all understand, particularly at that time when it was a Republican uh, city council at the city of SeaTac, um, how detrimental it would have been for the city of SeaTac to have jurisdiction over the Port of Seattle. That was the reason why we joined the lawsuit. Understand that it could be misconstrued as a vote. However, against 15, that is absolutely not accurate. And again, I've been in my job helping low-income communities for 10 years, two years before I joined the Port of Seattle. It would be seconds. incongruent with my values to have done that. But again, we passed the Quality Jobs Initiative and I'm so happy, I'd be happy to send you the initiative so you all can see the details of that. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any further questions? We have one. So, out of your time at the port right now, uh, or you know, the past you know many years, uh, what would you say you're most proud of? Um, a lot of things, but you know, the th one of the things I'm most passionate about is um, the work that I've done for youth um, in providing those opportunities. So um, about five years ago, I set a goal for the port to triple the number of interns that we have at the port. I didn't even know what that number was, but I'll just tell you it was 32 at the time. Didn't even know that. But now um, we routinely have over 100 uh, interns, summer jobs, again, for youth from underserved communities. So in the last five years, we've actually had more than 600 uh, youth come through and have summer full-time summer jobs, paid summer jobs, which opens up their eyes to all these uh, great potential careers. But again, um, in the summer of 2020, when we were making massive budget cuts like every, yeah, other, right. every other agency, um, I was able to convince our port staff to continue with 80 of those internships, but then we provided another 250 jobs to youth by partnering with uh, groups like El Centro de la Raza um, and providing jobs there. So I'm just really proud. There's over 700 kids that have had jobs in the last five years because of that effort. And I just think that's pretty cool. Great, thank you. Any other questions? We have time for one more. All right, seeing none, you may go ahead with the one minute wrap up. Okay, well, I don't have too much more to add. I just wanted to say thank you so much for interviewing me. I really appreciate it. I, um, the 36 is my favorite because you guys are the port's backyard and we've had a really long relationship and I just, I'm proud to have the support of um, uh, Jeannie Cole Wells and Reuben Carlisle um, and Gail Tarleton. And so I would love the 36 endorsement. Um, if you don't go that way, I understand. Um, I'm always happy to work with all of you. So I just really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yeah, thank you. Really great questions. I appreciate it.